What's up guys and welcome back to the TK Tech video. Now I've not done a note taking app review video in a, in a while. What I've got here though is a quite an interesting, well it's not a note taking app, it's a PDF reader but um, it's got some features here that I kind of want to share with you guys. I've got my tablet out because as you can probably assume this is going to offer additional note taking, annotating features on it. So let's get into it. This app is called UPDF. The first thing I want to say is that it's free as an application on iOS and Android. However, you can also get it on Windows and uh, Mac OS. Because it's a desktop app, you do get those additional features, um, which, I'll, which I'll touch upon. There is a discount code in the link below. Um, we'll talk about more about that in a moment. But first, I'm going to go through the features available for free as an app. And any features that aren't available on the application, um, I'll demonstrate them with my laptop. So when you first get into the application, you've got these default folders here, you've got all PDFs, favorites, unsorted and trash. So I'm gonna start off by actually getting a PDF up. Okay, so I've got this example here. The first category of features I wanna talk about is editing. For me personally, when I'm reading PDFs and things like that, the reason I'm using my tablet is because that is where I mostly read them. I don't use my laptop much because I like to highlight PDFs, write in them, things like that. So let's go on the editing tab. As you can see, there are multiple uh, options here that you can do on the tablet. There are slightly more features on the laptop which we'll get into. The first thing I want to talk about is marker. So highlighting, quite straightforward. You can highlight with your pen or finger or whatever. You go into that and it offers a bunch of different highlight color options. The great thing about it though, is that even after you've highlighted, so let's say I highlight this part as well, I can then decide to click on it and I can edit it in, uh, afterwards as well. So then I can change the color of the highlighter without actually having to remove and then highlight it up again. With the same tool, you can highlight, but instead of actually highlighting, it will underline, for example, or you could highlight and it will cross through. Obviously, all of these things, you can change the colors, etc., etc. You also have these writing pens. So the great thing about it is that you have these three pens here that always stay up. So you can configure these three pens for three different colors for easy access. And these pens allow you to uh, mark up and sketch and things like that. For example, I could draw arrows or I could circle particular things. Now, if you go into each individual pen, you get the option for changing the thickness as well as changing the colors. And like previously, how we saw with the highlighters, you can then afterwards uh, click on it, edit it, and then change afterwards at a later point in time. Again, you've got these three highlight options here. The difference between these highlight options is they're kind of like free flowing highlight options. So if you prefer just to be able to highlight like that, you can do, personally I don't because it makes it all messy. I will just say though, I do wish there was an eraser function here. You can obviously click on it and cut individual ones um, or you can click the undo button here, but just having a quick eraser function would help. So we go back again. We've got these comment tabs here. If you click on that, this gives us a bunch of different, almost like sticky notes that you can use. So um, so I can, for example, click that there and make a comment. And I can have that note there so that when I am viewing it, um, I can just click on that note and it can show up. However, what's a bit more quirky about this is that there's some other options available. So it doesn't have to be a sticky note like that. I could put uh, a tick as well. I'll quickly let them know about things that are nice. That's quite a quirky uh, take on sticky notes. I've not seen one that lets you change the actual uh, icon. The next one to have is shapes. Uh, personally, don't think I would use that much, but um, if you want to mark up a PDF by circling things or pointing uh, straight arrows to something, you can do that. Like with the pens and the highlighters and things like that, you can click them on later, edit them, and you can change their colors and their transparency and things like that. The next one are these stamp. And this is actually one of my favorite features, I'm not gonna lie. I've not seen it before in any uh, other PDF reader. It's a bit quirky, but I think it can be used uh, in a genuine, useful way. There are three different categories. So the first one, I'll just show you, makes it easier, is a review stamp. So you can either, so let's say someone sent you a draft, uh, or you're sending a draft, you can mark that as a draft. The next ones are for annotations. So at the top of the, the document, you can put this. Um, because it's a draft, it's not for public release, let's say. And the one after that, just some simple marker stamps as well. Those are the features uh, on the application version, at least. Now I'm going to talk about the additional features that you can get on the Windows desktop version. So I'm going to show you the same feature. So I'm not going to go over, but you've also got the highlighter one, the streak through, underline, all that stuff. With the desktop version, you can add text as well. So hello, testing, 
text, change the color, font. So that can be quite useful as well. You do still get the sticky notes here. You also do get the pencil. So obviously some laptops are uh, compatible with styluses. In my case, it, my, my laptop's touch screen. So um, I could also write with my finger if I wanted to. Interesting enough, the, the desktop version actually does have a dedicated eraser, which is good to know. And in terms of shapes, it's got the same shapes here. There may be some slight differences in terms of the features between macOS and the Windows features. macOS does have a little bit more. I have contacted UPDF. They said they're saying they're working currently on uh, adding all the features to Windows at the moment. In terms of uh, editing the PDF, you can do more here as well. So for example, you can choose the text that you want. You'll be able to edit it, move it around, not just move it around and things like that. You could actually change the font and things. So I could actually make the font bigger, for example, if I wanted to even change the color. I can also replace an image. So if I right click it, click replace that image. So I want to replace it with my logo. Um, it will try to fit it to the exact uh, aspect ratio of that image. It will detect images and you'll be able to move them around as well. It's all about doing these little shortcuts just to make things much more easy for you. Now, when it comes to editing text, it's all well and good when you have a, you know, a digital PDF that it can easily recognize the text and the images and things like that. However, what if I had a picture, an image like this one that I wanted to scan and convert it into a PDF? How do I then make that digital? Well, this software has something called uh, OCR. Um, which stands for optical character recognition. I'm going to show you what that does. So what I've done is I've scanned this using, you know, a basic uh, smartphone application. Uh, basically just scanned this. Essentially what I have is, is an image, but it's in a, a PDF file format. After inserting in here, you can see that there's no real recognition of what text is or what the image is. However, after clicking the OCR, I can get it to kind of like analyze the whole PDF and essentially get it to recognize the text or recognize images from that. So now when I click on text, it recognizes that text and I'm able to kind of like edit it, manipulate it just how I did uh, previously. And I can highlight that all. And for example, I can make it bigger and I can bold it. And if I even want to change the color of it. And all of this is from essentially what, it, what was a picture. Even this image, which is probably kind of hard to see uh, or hard to distinguish from the text. It does recognize the main structure of it and you can click it and you can move it around. And now essentially I can convert any scanned PDF and make it uh, digital so that I can edit the text that's on it, edit the images that are on it. So that's OCR. Uh, again, some more additional features that you can get here is cropping. This is something available on the desktop version. So for example, I'll choose this page and if I wanted to, I could make it smaller. That is an additional feature. Um, on the desktop version, should you wish. You know, I'm talking about the stamps that you can get on the Win app version. It goes one step further here where you can actually add watermarks and change the backgrounds and things like that. So um, let's say you actually did have a piece of confidential information. You could literally add a watermark, confidential, and I want it to appear all across the page. That's a bit too dark because I want to be able to still read the writing. So I'm going to decrease the opacity. I just want to say like I've not had much time with this application or this software. It's very, very intuitive to use. I, I, I must say that. Okay, so let's go back to the tablet version here. We've talked about annotating and editing a PDF. Now, how do we organize it? That's the next big thing because we have a note taking app or PDF uh, reader app. You want to be able to organize those notes and those PDFs. We can add pretty much an indefinite amount of folders. Um, the great thing is, is that when you go into a folder, you can keep adding folders. So I can call this skin. And in skin, I can add another folder and call it lecture one. And if I wanted to, I can still add another folder. So you get the idea is that there's there's an infinite, pretty much infinite amount of folders that you can keep going into. And that's something that you don't see on all note-taking applications, <clears throat> OneNote. Now, if you hold on that, you can rename the folders, move them, copy, duplicate, and you can add it to your favorites as well. And that will go to the top. It would be nice if I could edit the icon, maybe change the colors or something like that. That will be able to help me just quickly distinguish between folders. Now I'm gonna go back to my laptop here when talking about organization because the desktop version has many more features that you can take advantage of. Now what I can do is go to the organize pages button here and it'll show me all of the pages and it'll give me a really easy way to modify, uh, rearrange um, and, and organize the pages as I wish to. The great thing is, is that you can insert 
PDFs. So for example, I could insert another PDF or you could even insert just a blank page and you can actually just replace a page. I'm going to choose a random PDF there. Uh, there you go. You can extract. So if I wanted to, I could just select these three PDFs at the bottom and I could just uh, extract that as a brand new PDF. Um, or even split it. So there's additional features um, in terms of organization. Okay, so the next section I want to talk about is the sharing slash converting um, files kind of aspect of a PDF reader or a note taking app. For this particular set of features, the app version is much more limited than the desktop version. On the app, what you can do is you can very easily go into it with all these bunch of different options like we talked about before in terms of um, organization so you can move it around, duplicate it, delete it. You can share it and you have this very typical ways of sharing it. Whichever way that your device lets you share something, you can do that. In terms of what you can do on the Windows version or the Mac version, you've got this side panel here on the right uh, and you can see you have a, a bunch of different options here. Easiest one to mention is you can obviously save it as a PDF um, and you can also send it by an email. What you can additionally do, which I think is really, really useful potentially, and it's probably a, a quite a big selling point of getting the desktop version, is being able to convert or export the PDF as a bunch of different other types of files. So in this case, for example, you can convert it as a Word document, a PowerPoint, an Excel document, um, as an image if you want. So let's say I wanted to convert it as a Word document. Um, I don't want to convert the whole thing, so I'm just going to choose a random page just to make it easy. It's converting. Now I can open this up, this page up as a Word document. This offers so much more flexibility. I will say particularly for PowerPoints, this is quite a useful feature as well. But now you have all the capabilities and features and editing tools of Microsoft Word. For example, let's say I go to the top here, I can change the title. That's pretty cool. An additional security feature here is actually that you can protect the document. So you can have the document require a password. When you want it to be open, I can restrict um, someone else editing it. So for example, if I try to set a password, let's call it one, two, three. So now actually, now even if I try to open that same PDF on, on my tablet, so I've, I've put it on my OneDrive, I'm trying to open it on my tablet, it still re it requires that password to let me unlock it. Okay, so just to wrap things up, I wanna talk about the readability aspect of this application. It's important that as a PDF reader, it's easy to actually read from it. From the Android and iOS side of things, you do get variation in the view settings. So uh, you can view it as a single page, or you can view it as a, uh, two pages. You can opt for vertical or horizontal scrolling. However, another additional feature that I like is its ability to be split screened. And I can show you how it works. So I go into the PDF that I want, and you can see there's an option for open in multi-window view. Now in order for that to work, I'd say I need to set up the split screen mode first. So all I have to do is open in split screen view. Now I can open multi-window. And what I can do on this side is click on any other PDF that I want. So I have one that I was messing around with earlier. Now I can have two different PDFs and read them right beside each other. It's a very similar experience on the desktop versions. However, the difference is that with the desktop, it's more of like tabs and you can have as many tabs as you want. So yeah, that's pretty much my dive in on the UPDF app available on iOS, Android, and the desktop version on Windows and Mac OS. If you're interested, click the link down below for up to 42% off the Windows and Mac versions. Um, those offer way more functionalities, way more features. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Anyway guys, I'll see you in the next TK Tech video.